In this section, we're going to be talking a little bit about state functions. But before that, we can finally give you a preview of the first law of thermodynamics. In this course, we assume that thermodynamics is defined as equation 1.5a. Delta u is equals to q plus w. In some of the textbooks, they use delta u is equals to q minus w. Both are correct, it just depends on the perspective which you take. The above relationship is a general description for the first law of thermodynamics, which states, a system that performs an amount of work W on its surroundings and receives an amount of heat Q is defined to have undergone a change in internal energy. Now, remember, this law is a completely general equation that can be applied to all forms of working. Remember that work done by the system on the surrounding is negative and heat absorbed by the system is positive. And for completeness, we can actually write the entire equation, okay, including potential energy and kinetic energy as a complete description. Now, what is a state function? Now, in thermodynamics, the change in quantity between two states are independent of the path the system took to get between the two states. It's defined by two things, the final and beginning equilibrium states. Hence, the change in internal energy of a state is the internal energy of state 2, the final equilibrium state, minus the internal energy of state 1. Now, all we need then are the parameters describing its final and initial states. These include things like pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature are variables known as state functions. So how about work and heat? Now, when we talked about state functions, state functions got from point 0.1 to point 0.2 just like that. We were concerned about their beginning and final states. With non-state functions, however, the path matters. For instance, in A, described in equation 1.7a, we first increased its volume, followed by increasing its temperature to reach 0.2. In B's scenario, we first increase its temperature, followed by increasing its volume. Heat and work are not state functions. Because they are dependent on the path, it is important that we take note of how they got there, as opposed to just being concerned with beginning and final state. Here, I want to introduce you to the concept of a quasi-static change. A quasi-static change is essentially reversible work. In this course, we assume that our changes are mostly quasi-static. So let's take, for example, a piston pushing down onto a volume of water into a beaker. Quasi-static changes essentially are very small incremental changes which eventually lead your piston to go back to exactly where it started. They're reversible processes because they can be reversed by a change in direction of the driving force. However, it's important to note that in the real world, there are very few changes out there that are actually truly quasi-static. Non-quasi-static changes or irreversible work would be represented by the point whereby so much force is applied to a liquid that it causes a rupture to the vessel. 